Hello, for the very first time, welcome to Deer Go Homestead. I'm Krista. I'm Brent. And uh, we have a homestead here in Central Maine in Hardiness Zone 5B. Um, earlier this week, we launched our channel on um, Instagram and Facebook, uh, put out our first blog, and launched our website. And um, I've just been really agonizing on what our first video should be about um, because... Well, there's just so much that we could talk about. Um, but that's when I saw a, a vlog by a homesteading family called The Top Three Things You Should Do This Year to Increase Your Self-Sufficiency. And in that vlog, she challenged other people to come up with their top three list. Um, because as you guys all know, we experienced supply shortages last year that are coming into this year as well. And there's just been a lot of uncertainty. Um, so a lot more people right now are interested in becoming more self-sufficient. So with that, I thought I would share my top three things. Um, number one, I would say, is get out of debt. Um, you know, in this country, we've, we've become accustomed to having a lot of debt, whether it's for our education, our home, our vehicles, our vacations. Um, people are just really used to having a lot more debt than than what people used to have um and that debt really holds us down and holds us back and in times of emergency uh it makes us a lot less resilient because we always have to find a way to to make money to keep on top of those payments um so here at Deer Go Homestead we've been very committed over the last few years to paying off debt um, that means uh, we haven't had a raise in years because every time we get more money, we pay more money to our debt. Every time we pay off a loan, we take what we're paying on that loan and we put it forward to another loan. And so one by one by one, we've been knocking out all our debt. Now we're just down to paying off our house, which we hope to do in the next couple of years. So um, for me, number one is definitely paying off your debt and learning to do with less well, that's not only that, hun, but the, the idea of paying down these debts gave us opportunities like when we wanted to move back from Maryland, um, we weren't strapped down, and I was able, we made the pact that whoever got the first job, the other person could quit. And so Krista uh, landed a good job, and so I quit, and so we moved back, and, and that's been a limiting factor for a lot of our friends who wanted to move back to rural areas or into more self-sufficiency is that they couldn't do that because both of them needed to find a job at one time. And so that the idea, I think what Chris is saying is it gives you the freedom. She also was in a really horrible job that the boss was just terrible to her uh, and she was able to quit and it worked out because you had built up an emergency fund and you could not be... Um, in servitude to your debt. And so, you know, I think that's a, one of the ones I would share for myself as well. Yeah. Um, and for number two, I would say it's kind of twofold. One is if you don't have a chest freezer, get a chest freezer um, and then fill it with meat. <laughs> um, you know, we raise a lot of our own meat. So when the pandemic hit and meat, meat counters were empty, we didn't feel it at all here because we, you know, either ourselves or we go in with family on raising cows, pigs, chickens, and turkeys, and we have backyard chickens that lay eggs. So we didn't feel the squeeze there when everybody else did, and the the cost shift didn't happen overnight for us. Our grocery bill for meat didn't exponentially increase like it did for everybody else because we already have a year's worth of meat on hand at all the times. Now, I know that it's not practical for a lot of people to do what we do as far as raising meat. So I would say if you can't raise meat, make a relationship with a local farmer uh, or a neighbor. Um, go in with, with buying a whole cow or half a cow or a quarter of a cow with family or, you know, a whole or a quarter pig. Um, because the supply chain between you and a farmer in your town, it takes a lot more to break down that relationship than it does to break down, you know, the, the national supply chain for meat, which comes from just a few slaughterhouses. And, you know, the the quality of the meat is also very different. Uh, it's cheaper, but you get what you pay for. So I would say for me, number two is 
either raise meat or make a relationship with a local farmer and start getting as much meat as you can that way. Well, I think mine second one is in that same thread, but don't believe you can't do something um, for yourself. You know, try to figure out things, how to do things for yourself. Um, that's led to us, you know, we raise grass um, fed uh, poultry or, or out on our lawn, I should say. Um, and we move those around in a chicken tractor and that's something I just threw together, chicken wire, uh, used uh, roofing and wood. And within just the area, pretty much on our leach field, is we raise 30 chickens a year. And so that's really wasn't that difficult to do. And it doesn't take that much time. But you mm -hmm. have to be willing to do stuff for yourself. Um, that's led to a lot of self-sufficiency. You know, I've done my own mechanics work for years and years and years. We do our own firewood. We logged uh, trees at my family's wood lot, and we built a garage this year, uh, mostly because the two things I think that lead to self-sufficiency is uh, partnering with families and friends on projects, you know, like my father's a builder, really lucky there, um, but also being able to just try stuff yourself because you'll learn more and more that way, and you all those skills that you gain grow on each other and they're always useful in the future i don't do much mechanics work anymore but if we ever break down it's an easy fix if i needed to it's an easy fix if there's something i need to do out in the yard um you know i have those skills and they're easily applied um, and for me, number three would be um, if you garden, and I strongly encourage everybody to garden, of course, um, I would change all of your varieties from, if you grow um, hybrid varieties, I would switch over to heirloom or open pollinated varieties uh, so that and learn how to save seeds. Um, I know that seed saving can be really intimidating, uh, but for a lot of crops, it's incredibly simple and you don't really need a whole lot to do it. Um, and it, it really gives you a lot of resiliency because, you know, from one tomato, I can save enough seeds for years and those seeds last for years. So, you know, there was a lot of breakdowns in the seed supply chain as well over the last couple of years because uh, there's a, an increased interest in self-sufficiency and gardening goes hand in hand with that. So, you know, while there's shortages of certain things, I know that if I save seeds, I can never experience that shortage. I might not be able to get every crop that I want to grow, but I'll be able to grow enough food to feed my family um, simply because I know that anything that I plant in my garden is either heirloom or open pollinated, and I can save those seeds. Now, you, if you got into a pinch, you could save a seed from a hybrid variety, but it just means that... You know, whatever you say, if you save that seed, whatever you plant the next year, it won't look like what you saved the seed from, but it'll be edible. Um, but anyways, it's it's not always the best way to do it. So I would say if you grow hybrids, switch over to heirloom and open pollinated varieties. And if you don't garden at all, start learning how to garden. Yeah, and my last one would be really start um, investing in your outdoor skills, um, I think. You, the ability to navigate outside and withstand any conditions outside is a real strength of ours. Um, you know, if you get broken down on the side of the road, you have to walk 10 miles. It's no big deal for me. You know, I, this morning we're out skiing negative one degrees. You just start living a more prepared life and you start thinking about, uh, you know, what conditions would you put yourself into? So like I deer hunt sometimes in the North Main woods and, if you break down up there, you're probably not going to get help. And so that just leads to uh, a mentality of independence, and it served me very well. Um, and I really don't worry about if the heat goes out or if anything happens. Um, you just It builds that resiliency and confidence. problem problem solving mindset. Yeah. It takes a lot of confidence to feel comfortable by yourself out in situations like that. But as my... My friend Ed says there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. So be prepared. <laughs> yeah, and I would just say in closing is that 
you know, all these things are a journey. I'm better now than I used to be, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope to be better in the future than I am now. Yeah. All right. So with that, those are each of our three suggestions for becoming more self-reliant and resilient in times of emergency. Um, if you guys have any suggestions that you'd like included, I, I encourage you to leave a comment below. Thank you all. And if you're new here, please subscribe to this channel. It's brand new. I hope to come out with content at least once a week. Um, probably more often than that once the garden is in full swing. But until then, once a week. Um, some of the things that we like to do is we like to garden, obviously. Uh, we like to forage. We hunt. We fish. We preserve food. And we like to come up with new recipes and new ways to prepare the food that we grow and forage and hunt and fish. So uh, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, please subscribe. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.